in the world's largest grid. This is a fascinating story. It shows you, it proves that the cost of energy will fall massively once we use solar and wind generation and batteries as our primary method and means for producing electricity. In fact, here in Australia, there's a state where the cost of electricity is more than 50% cheaper because they use renewables versus other states where they, where they use primarily coal power. Very bizarrely, the state of South Australia here in Australia is seen as a world first. It's seen as the future of a renewable energy grid. In fact, it's like a test monkey. People are looking at it to say, hey, will renewables work on the grid or will they not? And why are they doing that? Well, the reason is because this is the biggest grid in the world that runs primarily on renewable energy. In fact, it's a fascinating examination of the future of global electricity. Seriously, it's absolutely intriguing what's happening. And it just gives us a glimpse into what the world will look like in 10 years from now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, in Australia. I'm really, you know what? I'm very proud of these people in South Australia. In general, they've re embraced renewable energy in an incredible way. You know, they embraced the Tesla gigawatt batteries when the prime minister of this country openly mocked them, said they were a joke and they wouldn't work. Well, they did. Adelaide was right. They were forward thinking. Our government were just clueless, didn't know what they were talking about. I mean, our government didn't like maths. South Australia, they went, you know what? Let's think about this logically. And well, here we are. We're in a position where they have transformed their state in a way that's truly, truly remarkable. Now, big thank you to all of you for contributing to our GoFundMe campaign. It's made an immense difference to myself and my wife's future for her being able to get the treatments that she needs, which are very expensive. I was going to have to sell the house to do that. Um, I was preparing, literally preparing to do so. In fact, uh, now I don't have to um, because of you guys. That's amazing. I mean, all I can say is realistically, this is the kind of people that you are, that you would do that for me and I really really sincerely thank you for that if anyone asks you in the comment section to donate do not listen to them they're pretending to be me i can't get rid of these idiots unfortunately these scammers are just everywhere i've deleted a lot of their comments but yeah if anyone's pretending to be me in the comment section don't click on any links i only have a, a gofundme page if you want to see what that is i'll put a link in the description and a patreon account and that's it in this glimpse of the future South Australia, the largest renewables based grid at 91.5% wind and solar, showed us the way of the future. Giles Parkinson for Renew Economy said that the share of renewables in South Australia reached an extraordinary peak of 91.5%. Now, this wasn't for a minute, this was for an entire month. This is wind, right? Wind and solar were nearly 92% of all energy generation for an entire month. Everyone said this wouldn't happen, couldn't work, wouldn't work, right? Nighttime comes, there wouldn't be enough energy. Guess what? They were wrong. This is what the Australian energy market operator describes as a glimpse into the future of world energy. I'm serious, this is the future. This is like watching the Jetsons, except it's real. South Australia is already seen as a test case for the global switch to renewables because it has a higher percentage of variable wind and solar in its electricity market than any other gigawatt scale grid anywhere in the world. 68.4% over the last 12 months and with only one synchronous link to another state. In other words, it's not depending on other states for its energy. It's basically producing it primarily itself. And in fact, because that link was shut down for much of the month. It didn't get any energy from anywhere else for most of the time. Now you're probably thinking, oh, surely there's other countries around the world where they have more renewables and you'd be right. There absolutely is. There's places in Africa, for example, where they're running on 100% renewables, but it's hydro. It's existing, primarily it's existing power. This is different. This is a grid running primarily on wind and solar, well, 92%. Supporting high levels of renewables, says Giles, in an isolated grid is much more challenging because of the need to provide essential grid services. 
Although Western Australia, a different state, in fact, it's the largest state outside, I believe, Texas in the world, recently reached a peak of 84.3% on December of 12th of last year. So there's another state in Australia coming close to South Australia. You can see Australia is changing very, very rapidly. It's actually quite remarkable. In November last year, South Australia did even better. Its synchronous link to Victoria was cut for about two weeks while severe storms brought down one of the main transmission towers, removing its ability to export excess large amounts of wind and solar or even import if needed. So what's happening now is there's many days of the month in this state where they have too much energy, so they'll send it over to another state. However, because that transmission line was cut, it shows what will happen if this happens when you have excess energy in the grid. Now, in the future, there'll be batteries everywhere and we'll just be recharging the hell out of these batteries. We'll have all full battery packs everywhere. It'll be like having, it'll be like having full dams, like 100% full dams. All your dams are 100% full. You've got masses of energy. You can pretty much use as much water as you want. Well, you can't, can you? Because you know that it might not rain for a couple of years. It's possible. In this situation, it's different. You can't say it's not going to be sunny for a couple of years. It doesn't work that way, right? This is what Tony Sieber was talking about when he meant the world will be an energy superpower. When he meant the cost of energy will become marginal because producing it will be so cheap. It will be so much energy. It will be called energy superpowers at an individual isolated grid level. The latest quarterly energy dynamics report from AEMO reveals that South Australia, even in its islanded state, meaning its isolated state when it was cut off from the main grid of Australia, peaked at an extraordinary 92%. While South Australia lost interconnection, instantaneous renewable penetration in South Australia peaked at an extraordinary 92% in November. This was possible with the support of four new synchronous condensers that are strategically placed within the South Australian network, providing system strength services that are traditionally offered by coal, gas, and hydro. There you go. That's how they do it. There's been so many comments that I've read saying this is not possible. This isn't possible. I always say to people, it is. People will always figure out a way. There's always a solution. Entrepreneurs will figure it out. That's what I love about America. For example, it seems as though entrepreneurialism is supported more than any other place in the world, from what I can tell. The ability to manage frequency using the Hornstar big battery and gas generation was critical to maintain system reliability with higher renewable penetration. In other words, Tesla's big battery that they built in Hornsdale and Adelaide played a huge role in this grid actually working. The event was a glimpse into the future of the planet when both batteries and gas generation will be key to Australia realizing its renewable potentials. Now, I don't agree with this comment from the Energy Commission saying gas is needed. In fact, I don't think we need gas at all, period. It should be noted that South Australia has nearly three gigawatts of gas generation capacity in its grid. However, it only provides a support role and it's sort of a legacy of what's happened in South Australia and what's dead now. For example, all coal-fired power stations are now closed in the state of South Australia. However, gas is being shut down. This equation they say will change rapidly as more gas generators are shut down, more big batteries are built, another three are already under construction in the state, including at Torrent Island, where a new will replace an aging gas plant. There you go, disruption in, in, in the works right there. And when the new transmission link to New South Wales allows bulk renewables to reach net 100%. Meaning, likely this year, the country, the state of South Australia, will hit 100% renewables for a prolonged period of time. In other words, yes, it is possible, Yes, it does work with solar and wind and battery storage. No, you're wrong if you think it doesn't. People are saying this. So many people are saying this. They're blowing this horn. And just because they can't work out how to make it work doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Here's the evidence. The combination of bulk renewables and raw grid forming inverters and the state's four synchronous condensers, spinning machines that do not burn fuel, means that gas will be relegated to a discrete role in fast start dispatchable capacity and its generation of last resort, at least until there are enough bulk renewables and enough batteries, which work as peaker plants in themselves, meaning those batteries will displace gas altogether. When South Australia reached 92% peak in 
peak renewables at 9.30 a.m. on the 21st of November. Most of it was coming from rooftop solar. 55% was coming from people's roofs. So in other words, 55% of all energy at that point in time was coming simply from people's rooftops. That's absolutely incredible. And what's even more incredible about that is the fact that solar panels are predicted to come down in price worldwide this year by a staggering 50%. Now, at that time, when solar roofs were making up 55% of generation, 33% of energy came from wind, and grid-scale solar made up 4%. However, there was too much rooftop solar and it was having a negative effect on the grid because they couldn't send that excess energy out of the state because the transmission lines were cut. They had to actually work out ways to curtail that excess solar. There was so much power from solar that um, basically the grid couldn't handle it for a little bit. In order to manage the power system, AEMO directed some synchronous generators online for FCAS provision and curtailed power from solar PV for four to 10 hours every day from the 13th to the 17th of November. In other words, for a four day period, it had to curtail solar significantly. All of this is delivering profound effects to South Australia. It had the lowest average wholesale electricity prices in December. In fact, in the December quarter, so for four months, this is around half the price paid in the coal dependent states of Queensland and New South Wales. In other words, here's proof. You install enough renewable energy and the price of electricity comes down. For example, Canberra, the price of electricity is the cheapest in Australia because they run on 100% renewables because they use hydropower. Here in Adelaide, the cost of electricity is 50% that of the populous Australian states where coal is still the primary source of electricity. However, that will all change. All coal-fired power stations in Australia will cease to exist by 2035. And that's not very long, less than 12 years. This is the future of the planet, my friends. Isn't this amazing? I'm so stoked to see this work. I'm stoked to see it bring down the prices of electricity and to see how this works, how this really does in the real world make electricity so much cheaper. And frankly, all the naysayers will not be able to say this anymore. Your electric car is powered by coal. That will no longer be true. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.